participate, let the stories begin. This evening, I am proud to prevent our, present our first teller. His name is Larry Thompson. He is an award-winning storyteller and cowboy poet and has been in front of audience for more than 30 years. With a warm welcome, let Larry begin. Well, thank you, Jackie. Uh, Celebration's always been one of my most uh, favorite events to attend, although we're generally doing it in person. So we got to thank T. Try to unmute myself. There we go. I think y'all can probably hear me now. It's hard to tell on these things. Let's just see if we can get somebody give me a thumbs up they can hear. There's one. So I'm going to share a little bit of cowboy poetry with you tonight. Uh, imagine, if you will, you're responsible to feed 10 or 12 folks, and uh, it's got to be a big old holiday dinner, and you look around, and there's nothing in the cabinets to fix for people. Now, that's what happened to this fellow right here. Now, Cookie planned the Christmas feast for all the ranch's folk, but his empty chuck box had him feeling like a pig without a poke. A few old carrots and, and then few spuds, but no pork or beef besides. Well, that just wouldn't do the job for Christmas dinner and all the sides. Now, there was a jar of hard red beans and a, a bag and a half of flour. But this predicament left him perplexed, and his mood began to sour. Now, the boys rolled in at dawn, and they wished him holiday cheer. And they all asked about his plans for Christmas dinner this year. Well, he gruffly muttered something about paying mind to chores and not worrying over dinner like cantankerous old boars. Well, old boss popped in and he said, how do, and Cookie let it slip that Christmas dinner might be off and he didn't want to hear no lip. Old boss said, do your best. You ain't never let us down. He tipped his hat and he was gone. Cookie's face took on a frown. Now with his apron and his coffee and the house all to himself, he tried to raise a plan as he stared at that empty shelf. Well, suddenly an idea struck like a crashing lightning bolt. He leaped up from the table like a feisty yearling colt with hands moving so fast that they could be barely seen. Them spuds was peeled and boiling and right beside them soaked them beans. Now he duly in them carrots and he dumped that bag of flour in a pile on the table like a big old ivory tower. And in that flour, he cracked some eggs and two handfuls of lard. He turned it up and rolled it over and kneaded it out till it got hard. Then he went to forming something with his weathered and floured hand. And a smile creased his face. This was just as he had planned. Now he coated it with butter and he made a wash with his last egg. He stepped back from the table and washed his hands off on his leg. He moved over to them spuds and that softened pot of beans and he dumped in them skinny carrots, a cup of flour and some pekin. He stirred and turned the heat down and set that pot to simmer. He just loved to watch that broth as it took on that glimmer. His flower creation had sat and warmed and thus began to rise. When he turned back from the stove, he was amazed at his creation size. Well, he popped her in the oven. He stoked them coals again. In one hour, it'd be done. Christmas dinner could begin. 
Well, he barred the kitchen door so them hands couldn't sneak in. They complained, but they loved the smell as they began to gather in. Now, them boys was plumb amazed and stunned when he told them to come in. They saw a beautiful spread of stew and a big brown turkey hen. Now that stew was thick and spicy and nobody seemed to dread that that turkey hen was really just a giant loaf of bread. Sometimes a Christmas feast is turkey and all the sides, but sometimes a feast is simply whatever the shelf provides. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Larry. That was great. Sound like my kitchen. <laughs>